Stephen. Andrew. Fancy spending another quiet night inside number six? I mean, nine? <laughs> nice. Yeah, definitely. So it's series four, episode three, Once Removed, directed by Jim O'Hanlon. I think that's the first time we've seen his name. Uh, produced by Adam Tandy, written by Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton. First aired on January the 16th, 2018. I love this. Such a good episode, isn't it? It is. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So sh- 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 shall I kick off with a little synopsis? And yeah, then tell, us, can... tell us what happens or set it up for us. Well, moving house is a nightmare. Though it's only 32nd on the list of most stressful events, the three most stressful events are the death of a spouse, divorce, and imprisonment. But you wouldn't normally expect any of that stuff to happen on moving day. So this should be pretty straightforward, right? I feel like your um, synopses have kind of developed <laughs> over time. <laughs> They're getting more and more theatrical and elaborate. <laughs> Well, Zanzibar's really set you off. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a whole new sort of art form. It's creating a synopsis that sort of has layers. Memento meets Midsummer Murders is how Reese has described this. Is it? Yeah. It is, which I think sums it up quite well. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's it's the gift that keeps on giving, this one. I, I really is. like it. And again, I feel like this, this series is them, they're, they're like on a victory lap. <laughs> and they're, yeah. just, they're just like, look what we can do next. <laughs> oh, we've messed, with, um, we've messed with language structures enough. Now we're going to go for entire narrative structures being pulled apart and played with in ways you hadn't even really considered before. It's just amazing. It it's so, the attention to detail with it all is just absolutely beautiful this is i mean it's a it's a format we've seen you know that they kind of played with it a little bit with nana's party with the kind of showing the end and then going back however long before that was to the start of the day um but this is yeah taking that to a whole new level in increments of of 10 minute chunks um and it, it it kind of reminded me a little bit of a quiet night in with you know that kind of criminal hired criminals mm. gone wrong um you know they get themselves into a situation that they didn't anticipate and they didn't really sign up for um and have have a whole lot of mess to clean up as a result um <laughs> and end up dying yeah yeah so yeah it's a genius, genius. It is, and I can only imagine how much meticulous planning it required to set a, set everything up the way it was set up and have those little nods to what you've just seen happen. And yeah, if there was, um, I think there's a certain amount of Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. <laughs> influence in like the non the non linear story thing and finding dead bodies propped up on toilets. Yeah. That's a, um, <laughs> not John Travolta this time, though. Steve Pemberton no. instead. Indeed. <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that, I mean, thinking back to the first time I watched it, like that first scene is, so you, obviously you're, the, you're starting right at the end. Is that the finale, isn't it? That's the yeah. culmination of everything that's happened. Exactly. So it's chaos. It's just like a bombardment of the what the hell is going on here. Um, and it's, it's, though, it's similar to those scenes that we've seen in like Lacachette and, um, well, Nana's Party. Other th- you know, when you have everything coming together in that one big um, like shitstorm moment. Um, except you've got no frame of reference for what is going on. So... Yeah, that moment with um, with Spike, the removal man, as as uh, what's his name, Percy comes down the stairs, vomits blood. Yeah, um, you know you've got Reese as Victor dressed up in a in a woman's dressing gown with oven gloves on, and then they find <laughs> Steve on the toilet, and um, the rug unfurls 
and Natalie's yeah. in there with a bullet wound in her face. <laughs> yeah, Natasha. Natasha. Um, yeah, and then uh, May ends up stabbing Victor <laughs> with a screwdriver. <laughs> so I can explain. <laughs> okay, okay, brilliant. Like, <laughs> and then we see the first uh, the first ten minutes earlier thing. Oh, come with me. Don't touch my penis. Did you see that, people? He's trying to play me like a cello. Oh my God! Oh. What's wrong? Are you okay? I'll get a towel. Which is brilliant because your your instinct to that is going to be one hour earlier or at yes. least yeah, at least totally. one hour earlier and you're going to get one and everything's just going to then lead to that point. Yeah. Um, but what you end up getting is this weird thing where your feelings towards each character change as each layer is like pulled apart where so you go into that previous one and um victor is you think helping out his dad yeah <laughs> well apart from the putting rat poison in his, in his cocoa um but you think it that just might be the container they put maybe. cocoa in. Right? um <laughs> it's what, it's things like that happen but you think he's struggling with a father with dementia yeah. um and he and his sister are finding things really tough and yeah and and even if you are taking that poison at face value it's this is his is like his last ditch thing of i can't cope with this anymore and mm. it's all very tragic um and then it, and then <laughs> three minutes later suddenly no that wasn't the case <laughs> and he yeah. was telling this old this old man with dementia that he had his a son that he didn't have and he's a dreadful human being um who's a hired gun <laughs> who's shooting people in the face yeah um it's just it's really messes with you as it goes yeah. through it, it you're so right like the it's those the story that you're creating to kind of try and connect the dots mm. backwards as you're going along is is all completely wrong like may, may mean, is it, this may is this person in the first scene it was she opens the door to the removals man she's this really nervous on edge lady who's um got a husband who likes to wear women's mm -hmm. um, dressing gowns and has got a very sort of strange way about him. And you have no idea what's going on with that relationship. And it feels like there's something odd happening there. <laughs> then they go into the hall well and the dad appears <laughs> shouting about being Andrew Lloyd Webber. And it's, yeah. yeah, it's, you are built, you're trying to make sense of it. You're trying and I think to... for, for me in that first scene, like the way that I reconciled that and made sense of it was, was basically drawing on the League of Gentlemen and just assuming that this is one mm. of those couples like you see in the League of Gentlemen yeah. that are completely unhinged and like just very, very odd. And then you've got Spike coming into that situation um, as the kind of normal person um, who kind of shines a light on the weirdness. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, like, as, as it obviously ravels and unravels through the episode, you, you see the explanations for each thing that you see as really weird, mm -hmm. um, like the oven gloves, which suddenly take a very dark turn. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like that, to me, that is, is genius because it just sets up this whole scenario where you're thinking uh, that we're going into this surrealist world with very odd quirky characters but actually it turns out they're they're not like yeah there's there's reasons for all of this um so yeah it might be if we sort of just wander through scene by scene um and we can kind of i guess peel back those layers and yeah. and okay. find those reasons for each thing that might be a a good way just first of all like the the title i've been thinking a lot yeah, about the title i can't i can't figure it out no really? is it like once removed okay once 
May is removed. Yeah, that's, I guess. Obviously, then everything will be okay. They'll go to Portugal and live happily ever after. But like, because I, I suppose once it's a, it, it's almost a reference to like family ties yeah. as well, isn't it? So I've never really understood it. No, in the, in the family tree context. No, it's very confusing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And like second cousins and once removed, once removed, always removed. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's another story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this. Uh, as you say, like the beginning is the end. Um, <laughs> Spike from Handle Me Gently, a <laughs> removal company, what arrives. Does, what does May call them afterwards? Uh, squeeze me tightly. Squeeze me tightly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the exact opposite of what you wanted someone to do to your valuables. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, and their kind of their interaction is quite like coming back to private view. It's 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 a little bit sort of. Um, carry on slapstick yeah little euphemisms and, the uh, and erectile that, dysfunction one with the uh <laughs> i've got I've, I've got to fill your slot yeah it might be weeks before i can get up again <laughs> he suffers oh, from erectile oh, dysfunction yeah, he suffers from <laughs> erectile dysfunction yeah. it's one of the most stressful things isn't it moving house people often say that but according to the homes and raised stress scale the top three are death of a spouse divorce and imprisonment Moving home is only number 32. Oh, well, that's something. And erectile dysfunction isn't even on the list, so I don't know what her problem is. I mean, I'm just getting it out there, you know, talking about it. It's no biggie. Evidently not. And in those, in, in those kinds of interactions, it almost shows May's genuine humour, because like, she's yeah, obviously yeah. in a very, very stressful situation. You know, she's, she is imprisoned right now um although a question that i have that we might come back to is why did she go back to the house um why is she in the house okay um but she is um and yeah like it's that resorting to those like kind of humor moments like when when he he says he's from handle me gently and and she says it's a bit of a mouthful yeah um (laughs) <laughs> and yeah those kind of yeah real real euphemisms better than van man style yeah that's our second gangram style reference <laughs> yeah. of this not this series but of the show as a whole mm. after reese's weird sumo outfit in um <laughs> the empty orchestra. orchestra yeah yeah so we we go into the into the kitchen where spike's having a look at He's assessing the load, um, looking, <laughs> <So> <laughs> looking <to speak>. at <laughs> what, what he's going to do as a removal man. You know, they have a conversation about, you're going to leave something for the whoever buys yeah. it. Um, champagne, lawnmower, human turd in a paint pot. <laughs> <laughs> you know. They're all comparable. <laughs> and then you see the first like real weird bit, which is like the box of breakables and all the breakables are broken. And, the, like, um, and the stain on the wall. Stain on the wall, yeah. Um, yeah, there are are kind of our out of place things, aren't they? For yeah. This scene that get explained next scene. Yeah, exactly. Is that the only two that you had from there? Um. Well, o- other than like Victor, generally. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and obviously May has a little breakdown at that point, doesn't she? Um, and then says it's all been a bit trying. And then they, that's when they talk about those, uh, the, the kind of stress factors, yeah. um, death of a spouse, divorce, imprisonment. And actually she's experiencing all of those things in, in this one day, um, to some degree. It's a stressful day. Um, oh, here's my husband. He might know. Darling, how long is a yonk? A what? A yonk. Sorry, this is Spike from Squeeze Me Tightly. Handle me gently. All right. He was wondering how long a yonk is. Uh, it's short for a donkey's year, isn't it? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, Which, makes, that makes complete sense. Yeah. Donkey's years. Donkey's years. Yeah. yeah. How is long that, is a donkey's year? Same as a dog's year? I, t- I don't know. I think I, I think it just means a long time. Oh, right. Donkey's years. I don't think it's a defined unit of... <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I'd, I'd quite like a specific. Right. So like a dog's years, what's a dog year? Seven years. I don't think donkeys have the same sort of anthropomor- anthropomorphization as dogs do, that you feel the need to kind of put their own unit of time on things. No one's looking at, their, at the donkey they own going, he's 84 in donkey's years. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might come with donkey's ears. Because donkey's ears are long. Ah. There you go. There's a etymology lesson. I feel like... Um, who's the lady in Dictionary Corner on yeah. Countdown? Susie Dent. Susie. Susie. Susie Dent. <laughs> Susie Dent. There you go. <laughs> donkey's ears. Yonks. <laughs> They're long. <laughs> so, yeah. And then... So, this then culminates in... Andrew Lloyd Webber coming down the stairs uh, <laughs> asks Reese why he's dressed like a tart, um, and then and then Reese Vic- Victor yeah tries to take him upstairs. Yeah, and then, um, he's like, "Don't touch my penis." He's trying to play me like a cello, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just all these like quick fire like random things. He's just like, what "I can't quite right keep now? up," and then this is the. Bang, the devastation occurs. Um, he coughs up the blood. Spike finds the estate agent in the toilet uh, looking for a towel. And then, yeah, the carpet falls and Natasha falls out. Victor holds up the oven gloves. May stabs him in the back of the neck with a screwdriver. Um, and this is all <laughs> happening four and a half minutes into the episode. <laughs> you got a timestamp on that, have you? Is yeah, that... <laughs> I, was like, I was like, how long has this we? taken to get to this? Four and a half. Because I feel really invested in these characters already. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we get our first ten minutes earlier. I can explain. Yeah, this... Um... This first shot was sent to us as a gif yesterday. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> as a encouraging... <laughs> Is this what you want us to, to do? You want to stir rat poison into a mug. <laughs> yeah, so Victor is stirring rat poison into a mug. With um, his hand... Or it's, a, it's a substance inside a rat poison mug. Uh, cup, uh, tub, t- well, tin. What else do you keep in a rat poison tin that isn't rat poison? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, like it's quite hipster to keep cutlery, <laughs> k- keep cutlery in like a golden syrup tin and stuff like that. Like that happens in restaurants. So you keep your granulated, granulated white sugar in a rat poison tin. <laughs> Why not? I'm just saying. Just clean, clean it well first. And I wouldn't put your spoon in the. Um, Tate and Lyle bag if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful. I, I put, I decant everything into the wrong thing. <laughs> Not just that, but direct swaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my jam. <laughs> Don't ask what's in the jam jar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why is Reese's hand wrapped? Yeah. Was it, my that, question at this point. Wrapped in a cloth. Yeah, J cloth and yeah, and you and this was the scene when he goes upstairs and he's talking to who we at the moment we just think is his dad, who's convinced he's Andrew Lloyd Webber, and you're feeling gen- genuinely quite bad because it seems that Reese is struggling with looking after mm. a dad with dementia, and yeah. they're having the sort of conversation that seems fairly typical. Um, where he suddenly comes back to a bit of lucidity and is, and is you're my son, aren't you? Yeah. No, he's not. An- <laughs> yeah. He's definitely not. <laughs> but as far as we're aware, he is at the moment. Yeah. And then, yeah, they have that little interaction, don't they? Like, you're my son and I have a daughter. And you, you're thinking, oh, there's a, he is lucid because he can, Remembers the he daughter. knows he's got a daughter. And then he has that really earnest moment, say, saying uh, look after each other i won't be here forever um and there's a real knowing thing there of like yeah no you you won't be here forever you (laughs) drink your cocoa make it through the day (laughs) so um and then this is where may arrives isn't it yeah it is 
Um, um, and she clearly doesn't know Victor. So this is a this is that thing of like, okay, so they don't know each other, like because she's a bit confused as to as to his identity. Is certainly not husband and wife as you think they are in the first well, seat. And no, this is the thing: is that she's the conversation she has with him is asking, is saying, "Oh, you must be Natasha's love interest," exactly. yeah. but she knows full well that he isn't. Because she knows who Natasha's love interest is, she knows it is her husband. So I, I'm not sure what game she's playing at that point. Unless she's just trying to get some more information out. Yeah, I guess so. And I guess it, it reveals straight away that there's something going on because he says yes. Um, yeah. And so she's kind of that's done its job really for her. She's established that this is someone who probably shouldn't be trusted and shouldn't be there. Um, we can see the rugs there in the hallway with Natasha already in, I guess at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's her uh, attempt to, yeah, just getting his, who is this guy? Like, is it the assassin? Cause she knows the assassin. Oh, the assassin is due to be there. Yeah. And she, I mean, she walks past him <clears throat> on the, on the way out, on yeah. her way out. Um, which it, this is where my question is like, why has she gone back to the house? Unless is it, Oh, hang on. Ah, no, hang on. Is this where she grabs the dictaphone? She went back to get her dictaphone. Yeah, she does, yeah. So maybe that's that, why she went back. Oh, yes. Because she yes. didn't want that to be there. There you of go. Of course. That's why she's Thanks. back in the house. Oh, everything. The, the Is that loose, the one thing that you were... Yeah, yeah. You've tied the up loose, a loose end. There loose you go. ends <laughs> have all been tied up. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, I'm glad about that. Um, and then we... Yeah, she then hears... Um, dad groaning in agony upstairs doesn't she um and and victor goes back up to deal with that it turns out he just thinks the coco's disagree with him yeah <laughs> it was coco over Which course that it kind of has <laughs> you know what she's like about people borrowing things <laughs> yes she didn't speak to mrs granger for months over that quiche plate so i believe uh better wait there Surely, rat poison in it hot water is going to It's a very distinctive taste. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's how they get the rats. Maybe, yeah. Rats love cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Disney Pixar film. Well, maybe they do. Well, they probably prefer a rat too. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, he then comes back downstairs to find... She had gone back into the lounge to get her dictaphone, hadn't she? Which is why she was there, of That's course. That's why she was there, of course. Obviously, why else would she be there? It would be ridiculous otherwise. And, yeah, um, Victor pulls the gun on her. Um, what's the exact line? Looks like the removal van. Listen to me, bitch. You do exactly as I say. He pops the glove on, doesn't he? <laughs> hides, hides the gun <laughs> under an oven glove. <laughs> Which is a, a particularly amazingly sinister use of an everyday <laughs> household object. <laughs> like, I don't think I'm going to be able to look at someone wearing oven gloves in the same way again. <laughs> Would it have the same effect if it was one of those ones that's like a long one with a glove on each end? <laughs> It'd be a bit awkward, that. <laughs> Nunchucks. Ah. <laughs> uh. Is um so the ten minutes earlier is that ten minutes earlier from the beginning of the little scene or from the end of the little scene? I didn't really get too bogged down in that because <laughs> have we just taken up five minutes of the ten minutes yeah. earlier? <laughs> <laughs> that that was a question that crossed my mind as like a a thing that I thought I really needed resolving. I, but I, then I was like, I I'm not going to overthink it. I built it up in my head to more than it was at one point. I was like, have I misunderstood something? Have I misunderstood the structure of what's happening here? No, I think it's fine. I think it's all okay. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's a little bit earlier. Um, <laughs> Sometime earlier. Although the I'm sure you could work it out because it does resolve into the beginning of that previous bit, mm. doesn't it? So yeah. it probably is five minutes earlier than the start of the previous one and that's the thing with the 10 minutes is like you're used you're so often used to seeing like two days earlier yeah 
or the day before, not 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And that's what makes this really, you, really interesting. When you go into sort of micro amounts of time, every minute counts. Yeah. Mm. So we are introduced to um, Steve as Hugo, another character from Steve's growing oeuvre of <laughs> incredible characters that he plays. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know what I thought when I first saw Hugo? Michael McIntyre? Yeah. yeah. Michael Mac- <laughs> Michael Slash McIntyre. Jonathan Ross? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so glad, yes. Those like, are my it, two things that I've written down. <laughs> he's Jonathan Ross slash Michael McIntyre. I've got Michael McIntyre as an estate agent written down here. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that must be on purpose because they deliberately use a different comedian's name later on when they're talking they about it. They do, exactly, exactly. It's got to be, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like this is what would happen if Michael McIntyre had taken <laughs> <was the> state <laughs> <laughs> living with his mum <laughs> he's such a sad character again oh man it's just heartbreaking <laughs> just heartbreaking and so that's like Zanzibar isn't it the kind of living with his mum character mm. yes it is yeah. It's, yeah he's just he's a bit more he doesn't really seem to have himself quite as together as the guy in Zanzibar though no he's I felt very like he had desperate. a life happening in Zanzibar yeah. um yeah Hugo yeah and he doesn't. knew what he wanted no poor Hugo who's just desperate for his sale yeah to the and point oblivious where he, to yeah <laughs> Victor being a hired yeah. assassin um, even the even the I mean he's aware that the blood on the wall is wet <laughs> um it, he says it will be sold before that's dry <laughs> he doesn't think hmm, it's a little bit odd that sort of blood colored stain on the wall that's been obviously painted over by the magnolia paint um he arrives as reese's um or victor's covering the body with the sheet doesn't he yeah so that's how we know how that got there although we don't know yet what he's covering with the sheet do we? no no and you don't know that that is blood at this point no Obviously, in need of a lick of paint, you can see they made a start already, but to be perfectly honest with you, it'll be sold before that's dry. Is your wife able to view today? I'd strongly recommend it. Uh, she's actually looking at some other properties at the moment. Which ones? Not Pennington Lane. It is sinking, it'll be a basement in two years, but you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> so, have we got a deal? Are we rocking? Well, I haven't really looked around it yet. Absolutely, be my guest. Any questions, don't hesitate. I will leave you alone. <sighs> Thanks. So he is desperate for the sale for Victor to buy this house. Yeah. <laughs> um, even- yeah, and he's like, have we, have we got a deal? It's like, <laughs> clearly, like, you, that's ridiculous, like, to assume. You've got five, you've got five minutes. <laughs> you have five minutes to close this deal. Oh, and his pr- pretend phone his call. His pretend yeah. phone call. And the, just that the phone ringing while he's pretending to be on it is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's odd. <laughs> I was yeah. speaking to someone. Um <laughs> It's yeah, and then Victor, obviously with no reason not to, says, "Fine, I'll I'll buy the house." Yeah. He says, "Thank you, you've sa- you've saved a man's life today." Just oh, and at that moment, he's like, "I have permission to throw in all the items," and then uncovers the chair to reveal Natasha's body, and it's like, "Oh no, you <laughs> haven't saved a. You've you've just you've walked into your own death." Like you would have, he'd have probably allowed him to leave, um, potentially. Yes. So, is a, I really love the physical comedy as well. You know, when he he's uh, Victor says he needs to have a look around because he hasn't actually looked around. He's not going to buy a house before he's sort yeah. of had a look around. Um, the physical comedy where uh, where Hugo just keeps appearing yeah, <laughs> behind the, the door. <laughs> he's like, "I'll give you as much space. I'll just you know." And it's like it's storage such space. A, <laughs> It's such a good estate agent impression. Um, yeah. And then there's, uh, there's a Chekhov's gun moment with um, the lovely door action, the, n- the no lock on the toilet. Mm-hmm. Um, Pretty and easy. Yeah. You see that sort of, uh, that return. And you, there's the Chekhov's, it's, it's all Chekhov's gun. Yeah. In there's reverse. Loads, yeah. Completely. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Upside down Chekhov's but gun. Seeing that at the beginning means it will be used by the end, but actually. Exactly you're seeing the end and it will be it will come up by the beginning yeah because you see the 
you see how the how that rug comes to be just poking out from underneath the toilet door as well. Yeah, I I, I wondered about that later. That's later. That's the next. That's thing, later. Yeah. yeah, we're not there yet. But. Um, so this is where he reveals Natasha sat in the chair with the gunshot wound in her head, um, and Victor tries to shoot him. Yeah. Uh, and this is all very silly and yeah the lying on the floor with a sheet over his head <laughs> oh as he runs towards him with the sheet yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> so that's like gonna... a ghost but it, it's a bit like it's a bit like that thing you know like if you hear a noise in the house downstairs and you like put the duvet over you <laughs> it's like that's not going to make any difference <laughs> It's like, for some reason, if I obscure my own vision, I'm going to be able to get out of this situation. If I if I cover my senses, I'm going to be able to escape this. No worries. As long as um, if I can't see it, it can't see me. I exactly. Think that's the, um, yeah. And, and he the, does get shot, but yes, he doesn't die. But he doesn't die. Um, he survives to then try and suffocate Victor with bubble wrap. <laughs> that's a brilliant. And then the in the bubbles. <laughs> it's like you just see this slow slow motion (laughs) escape through bubble wrap (laughs) pop in the bubbles and then does that weird sort of i don't know it made me think has he has he just like Pinched him in his BCG. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like gets him on the shoulder. Look, if you like... hit someone there, you get you get expelled. So <laughs> don't joke about that. <laughs> no, I, that was the rumor that always went around. If you hit him there, you get expelled. <laughs> but this, uh, this is just, I don't know. This is just such a tragic scene where he's in the toilet and he's like, "Just, oh, leave me alone. You killed Mrs. Falsham." He's, Any he's, idea how it's going to affect the ask the asking price? <laughs> like, he's still kind of like he's a shrewd he's a shrewd estate agent, yeah. whilst being a very childlike, innocent man child. Yeah. I guess it's, it's very much a man, you know. And that's like summed up in his statement of like, "Oh, let me go home. My mum's ordered me a biryani." <laughs> It's just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he wants. He wants to go in for his biryani. And then he has the rug pulled from beneath his feet. He does. Smashes his head. Please! Let me go home! My mum's ordered me a biryani! Well, come out then! Right, can you explain to me the blood stain on the door behind him? On the door... The toilet door. Mm-hmm. Is it there? It's there now. Is it? So when he falls and um, Victor goes into the toilet to deal with whatever he's just caused, it was a pretty lucky shot, really. Um, yeah. When he goes in and opens it, there's a big blood stain on the back of the door. Has he? Has Hugo just ended up with blood on the back of his head? during like the melee stuff oh maybe but yeah I don't, I don't remember where that i say remember i don't know i can't see you moving back through it where that came from he, maybe he, maybe he did get grazed by the bullet when he was being shot at yeah and yeah when he was he leaning must have, back he must have taken a shot yeah so maybe then when he was leaning against the door talking about his biryani he was bleeding yeah. onto it perhaps And this is where we see why Victor has no clothes on. Yeah. He's got blood on his clothes, <laughs> takes them off. Um, and You're it's old. also when Natasha ends up in the rug. Yeah. And um, this is where the, f- the first introduction to uh, Percy, as you, he starts shouting from upstairs. And and again, that's it, there's always a surprise because it's like, oh, Victor doesn't realise there's an old man upstairs. Like This is his first <laughs> introduction to him. Um, as he's calling from the bath, <laughs> he's trying to get him to help him out, um, and thinks he's Andrew Lloyd Webber's brother Julian. Yes. 
Well, 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 if it isn't the great Julian Lloyd Webber, come to see his elder brother, hmm? Now look, I've already given you the theme to the South Bank show, eh? And that's all you're going to get out of me. Who the fuck are you? Oh, shit, you know damn well who I am, Julian. Now come on now, help me out of this bath. All right, fine. And then I'll make you a nice cup of cocoa. Warm you up. Natasha. She's alive. It's the first time we see Natasha. She is. Without a hole in her head. Yeah. And uh, she's helping her dad with his bath. Mm. Which reminds me that she needs to get some (laughs) dried tomatoes. (laughs) 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 And this is... Uh, um, Yeah, this is quite sad. Where mm. she's reminding her dad that they're moving to Portugal and they won't be able to contact him. And this is really strange. The she's you know, they have this need to disappear. Yeah, you they, start they're to they're fleeing to Portugal. Piece together. Okay, there's an assassin here. They've obviously found they're they're running Are they mixed from something. Up in something. Yeah, that was my assumption. Yeah, they're they're mixed up in something. The assassins found them earlier than they would have liked because they would want to be in Portugal before they get caught. Um. Oh, Charles and I are moving to Portugal. Who's Charles? Who is Her Charles? Partner? And um, yeah, Hugo's check. Uh, she's sort of checking in with Hugo about the sale and telling him not to be desperate because last time yeah, he scared yeah. some people off because he looked like Lee Evans at the O2. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that, um, was, that, that was me going, yeah, that's on purpose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a counterpoint to the uh, Michael McIntyre character. Yeah, I agree. No, and, and so, so she tells her dad basically it's, he's going to end up. He's going to a nursing home. She doesn't seem too bothered about, it, except for the idea that he might be sharing a, a room with Tim Rice, which <laughs> he wouldn't be a, wouldn't be into. Um, but then he's he just <laughs> go on, get out, close every door to me. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, this is so that that phone call happens with Hugo, and then we pan down to Victor, who's arrived that door, and he looks a lot more together and with it, like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Other than his haircut, like he doesn't really have an assassin's haircut, but no, maybe he's seventies Scandinavian haircut is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's what it makes me think of. Yeah. Um, this is where he places his gun on the arg. He goes into the yeah. kitchen. It's like, you obviously don't know anything about argers. You've, no, you've never met an arger before, have you? <laughs> you know, no one puts the... You don't put your gun down on your arger. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows that. Idiot. You obviously don't live in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Natasha thinks that he's the removal man. There's a lot... The majority of this is about mistaken identity, isn't it? Mm. Pretty much the entire premise, even the house, is the wrong house. It's mistaken for being the Absolutely, other house. Yeah. Um, and then we get... So we get another another mistaken identity here that um, this is not the deliver. This is not the removals man. This is not Spike. <laughs> yeah. This is a guy who's here... Well... Who's here? He thinks to kill you. <laughs> you are aware of, kind of aware of this guy's existence, as we find out later. Um, you are aware that this guy exists in some way, but you think that he's three doors down, killing someone else. Yeah. Um, and there's there is even a weird thing from Victor. Like he he seems a little bit like you. You live like this is your house. You live here as if. He's not expecting her to look as she does. Um, whether he's had a photo given to him or he's had a, I don't know. He d- he just seems a bit sort of like, are you sure? But then he, like, no, he no, goes. I'm here to a job. He's a, he's a professional. He's a very professional yeah. young man. I, th- I was just thinking, you know, the, what we were saying about the title, the once removed thing, and you just saying about the mistaken identity. The, there's almost that link there of like being once removed from 
the direct knowledge of a particular person. So you're you're slightly removed from knowing exactly who they yeah. are. Um, and it happens time and time, you know, it'll happen later when May sets up that phone conversation with her husband between Natasha yeah. and her husband. Like everything's just once removed and therefore upside down, like the nine and the yeah, six. Yeah, okay. Like all the characters are kind of shifted onto each other. Yeah. One space to the right. <laughs> yeah. And there's an assumption you must be who I think you are, but they're not. Yeah. And then who they... And then the person who is not who the other person thinks they are plays the role of the person that the other person thinks they are. That uh, that makes far more sense than it sounds like it does. <laughs> <laughs> and so everybody's once removed from themselves and they're once removing other people one place <laughs> from who they are. I think you had it until 30 seconds ago. I think... Ah. <laughs> 10 minutes earlier. That made a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, Your spike from Handle Me Gently? We spoke on the phone. That's right, we did. Good. So I've managed to fill most of these boxes, but there are a few more breakables to go in. You can bubble wrap them, can't you? Oh, uh, yeah. Very good. Uh, can I take your jacket? Victor is quite happy to go along with being the removals guy just for a few minutes. I don't know yeah, whether, he, yeah. maybe, whether he's trying to suss out a bit more. Um, but there's some really good dialogue here on the basis that we know who Reese is mm. and it's kind of building up to um, lines like um, there's something satisfying about taking care of people Yeah, <laughs> just before he shoots her in the head <laughs> yeah do you enjoy doing removals I just yeah. try to make it as painless as possible for everyone involved do you do disposals <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then that that's where he talks about the loose ends. He says, there won't be any loose ends. I'll take care of everything. It's like, mm, there's a lot of loose ends here. Well, one of the big loose ends, I, I was surprised that a man in his line of work didn't think that when he put a wet towel on some wet blood, it was going to smear it all over the place. I know. <laughs> we doing? I, I, I found that so stressful. It's like... Ah, oh, you must have did, known that that was going to happen. How many people have you killed? Is this your second week on the job? <laughs> and at least get that blood as dry as you possibly yeah. can before you start adding paint to it. It's like, oh, come we on. sound awful right now. <laughs> <laughs> when clearing up blood, everyone knows the first <laughs> rule: hair dryer or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. And so this is where we find out why he's got the bandage or the, the J cloth. Oh, um, yeah, because he picked up the gun from the Arga hob. <laughs> Argas are hot. Argas so are he, hot. Yeah, picks it up, drops it in a bucket full of water, um, and then reveals a kind of Home Alone. <laughs> yeah. this is, and this is not the first Home Alone or the last Home Alone link that we will see in this episode. But oh, yeah, really? Home Alone, yeah. Okay. Home Alone burglar style. He's got, he's got that the wound, the burn on his hand. Um, and then, yeah, and that, as you say, that's eventually culminates in there's something satisfying about taking care of people, don't you think? Um, and absolutely. Absolutely. Pulls the gun out of the water. <laughs> Very trusting that his gun's going to work. Yeah, having, having been submerged. Been, <laughs> he obviously knows a lot more about guns than me, so... Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that because you've rec rescued your your kind of reputation <laughs> from yeah. what you'd said over the last few minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I was like in my experience of those sorts of situations, which are cartoons, um, <laughs> there would have been like an old sponge that just plopped out of the end of the gun, <laughs> at point, rather than a full bullet or bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> There's something very satisfying about taking care of people, don't you think? Absolutely. So that's how she ends up dead in the chair, and the blood hits the wall. And, yeah, as you say, lots of loose ends are now emerging as the blood... He's know, rubbed, is, is rubbed... Smeared around. <laughs> smeared around the wall. I mean, he's not even wearing gloves, so he's like leaving fingerprints everywhere. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's all over this crime scene, really, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Maybe it is his first week on the job. 
<laughs> he's got a good reputation, apparently. Maybe his maybe his employers have a good reputation, <laughs> <laughs> or he's got a good reputation as something else, a removal man, genuine. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And then we this then leads us into our ten minutes earlier finale. <laughs> yeah, where we get to the back to the origin of the story. We are now pre-death. We're pre-arrival of the assassin. Um. And we're thinking, is this the moment we're going to, you know, discover the the sort of prelude to what all this is about, like every, the context of everything and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and as I said earlier, Natasha at this point scrubbing the floor, trying to clean the toilet floor ready for, the, I don't know, the estate agent. What were those stains? I feel well, I like they, they were, meant something. Th- 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 there was a lot of attention tra- given yeah. to them. I, I don't know if the attention given to them was just as the thing where that then enabled her to like cover it over with that rug that then killed Hugo. Yeah, yeah. Or whether whether they were stains that pointed to something else. Um, you know, they looked a little bit like dog paws. Yeah, they did. I, I, I don't know what they were. So, yeah, if anybody has any uh, ideas about that, then please do uh, email us. Oh, maybe it was a deer. Maybe the deer <laughs> saw everything. <laughs> I can't even remember when it is now. What? Charles's birthday. It's May, isn't it? Oh, that's right. So, I wrapped them up and hid them in one of the drawers of the utility room, and that's when I found this. She knows about our affair. Well, that doesn't prove anything. May arrives at this point. Upset. She needs to talk. Needs to talk. Natasha's surprised because I, th- I thought you had to stay in today. She's a bit like, okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then um, she says, Charles, I think he's having an affair. And you're thinking, Charles, we've heard that name. It's so weird. All this backwards reveal, reveal stuff is just crazy. Yeah. This, we know about Charles. We know Charles in the context of him being the person that's fleeing to Portugal with yeah. <laughs> Natasha. It's and really I, odd. I quite like this um, as a scene because, you know, it's, it, it's kind of out in the open, like Charles, I think he's having an affair. Um, and if you are paying attention, you realize, okay, he must be having an affair with Natasha. Uh, and they're fleeing to Portugal together. Um and like it, this could be the scene where there's some sort of twisty reveal thing, but it's quite out in the open. Um, like there's there's not a lot of dancing around whether or not Nat- Natasha is the person having the affair with Charles. Like it, it just yeah we know yeah we it's know. obvious. Like you know like right from um, the fact that he she knew when his birthday was. Um, when she, she like set that thing up about the cufflinks, um, and and she's like, oh, I bought the cufflinks for his birthday. I can't remember when his birthday is. And Natasha jumps in and says, it, it, "It's May, isn't it? Or, or is it? Is it May? I mean, May so is May. Am I, am I getting confused? <laughs> um, and then yeah, she reveals this like uh, the the note that says she knows about the our affair. Which again, when you think about that, out of that context, it's like, that's a very strange um, thing to write on a note. She has written that, hasn't she? She's just She's written, written that. that so that yeah. she says it out loud for the... And Natasha is a bit, a bit slow on the uptake to the point where she's like, that's not, Ch- that's not uh, Charles's handwriting. Um, oh, uh, from Christmas cards, I know. It's, like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good, very good memory. She's very, she's very good at lying, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. And like the defining point, obviously, is like all those conferences in Dusseldorf, not a single Bratwurst has come back with <laughs> Charles. So obviously he's not gone to Dusseldorf because... Bratwurst don't travel well. I they don't. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. All those conferences in Dusseldorf, he never once brought me back a Bratwurst. Look, darling, you can't be worrying about sausages. I'm sure there's a perfectly innocent explanation. 
but yeah, as I say, like the fact that it's Natasha that's having the affair, it's not a surprise. It's not a twist. Um, even though like in other shows, in other films of this type, it would be the mm, twist. Definitely. Yeah. So it's another one of those. Yeah. The, the twist is not the twist. Um, that's not the thing. Um, and yeah, when she's like, ask him about it tonight when he gets home from work. Um, nothing to worry about you better go home i'd hate you to miss that package <laughs> it's like come on <laughs> what <laughs> trying to get her out of the house as fast as you can and then her her goodbye may is a very final sort of like yes yeah you're thinking mm, i won't be seeing you again there's something about that goodbye whether it's like a almost a a freudian i'm about to die or, and I don't realise it, or I know something more that's going on here. Um, and then we see the uh, the next Home Alone reference, which is a reference to Home Alone 2, lost oh. in New York. Where oh, the dictaphone. Thing. The dictaphone, yeah. And he sets wow. up the, uh, the fake phone call to book himself into the Grand Plaza Hotel. Yes. And that is essentially what May does with her <laughs> own husband, having recorded her conversation with, Deta- with Natasha. Plaza Hotel Reservations, may I help you? How do you do? This is Peter McAllister, the father. Yes, sir. I'd like a hotel room, please. Yes. With an extra large bed, a TV, and one of those little refrigerators you have to open with a key. This is another sort of bit of silliness with just the little the little line slips and the, the things that don't make any sense. <laughs> I like it when this just sort of slips into some silliness here and there. I think it's... Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Like, yeah, it's brilliant. Because it, and it doesn't take it beyond... Because even in that conversation where... I mean, like, it's ridiculous. Like, there is no way that you'd be able to... Pull that off, really. <laughs> like, rewind that conversation to the start of a of a line. Like, you'd cut into the middle of... Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you haven't bookmarked, like if you don't have a really clever dictaphone that is able to... This was tape, wasn't it? This was a cassette. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, or at least like a, even if it's a digital record, it should have to be um, probably actively pressing sort of bookmark at the end of yeah. each line and then it's like skip. And I don't know if that's even technology. <laughs> I've never used one. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like proper Home Alone moment. Um, but we enjoy it because it reveals then, sets her husband up, Charles, to spill basically the entire plot. Um, and yeah, I told her. She, and this is this is the moment you're like, why would Natasha know that May has to be at home today? because mm. all we know now is Charles told her that she had to stay in for a delivery. Why would Natasha know that? Yeah. Um, and May, but May hasn't made any sort of deal of that because she knows full well why Natasha knows that. <laughs> yeah. It's just confirmed something that she's probably been researching for a little while. She just needs proof of it. Um, <laughs> she knows about the affair. So... Even that's brilliant. Like May is May comes across as like this incredibly intelligent. Mm. Like she, she wins everything at yep. the end, um, having even murdered the assassin. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting her to read that note, she knows about our affair. That's a great move. Yeah, because um, that then just unlocks the door for Charles to spill everything to everything. Yeah. You can't be worrying about sausages. <laughs> uh and so this must be the first the first time May finds out that she's a part of a plot to be killed. Yes. Cuz he says we have to hold our nerves in about half an hour she'll be yeah. out of our lives for good. I've hired a the man I've hired is a professional um, be with the estate agent as an alibi. Love you. See you in Portugal. Yeah. Um, and she, I mean, she takes that in her stride quite well, really. She does, but I guess she's, 
she she's got to this point where she knows what kind of guy he is and knows that something is going on. It may not surprise her that that's what he had planned. Yeah. She just had it confirmed for her. Although maybe she's just sort of in a bit of a state of shock and that's why she just heads up the driveway and nonchalantly <laughs> flips the number round to uh, <laughs> disguise with the house number. Because I guess the alternative is just like, don't go home. Yeah. Um, but- or, yeah, but I guess this is, so at this point she's, she doesn't know how that will play. She doesn't know that he's necessarily going to turn up and indiscriminately shoot people without really considering who they are. Mm-hmm. She just gets lucky, I guess. Yeah. I suppose <laughs> it's, cool ju- that. it's just, it's a bit of a shot in the dark. I'll just go and turn the six into a nine. He thinks he's and going to number yeah. nine. Yes. And she probably doesn't return to her home before she then comes back yeah. to get her dictaphone. Um, so, yeah, and it's kind of a, a happy ending, really. <laughs> it or a end, happy beginning. Well, it ends happier than it started. Apart from Hugo. Apart from oh. Hugo. Hugo's mum's got two biryanis. <laughs> at the beginning, though, at that moment, as it ends, she hasn't got any biryanis yet. No. So. She might be hungry. At the, well, as it as the episode ends, Hugo's still alive. No biryanis have been wasted. We're all okay still, aren't we? <laughs> really? True. Yeah, good point. It ends point. before anything bad happens. Look, darling, you can't be worrying about sausages. What? What are you talking about? Listen, I know this is stressful, but we just have to hold our nerve. In about half an hour, she'll be out of our lives for good. The man I'm using is very professional. He comes highly recommended. You just make sure you're with your estate agent so you've got an alibi. And when the police come around and say there's been a murder, you can prove exactly where you were. Look, I'm going to go. I'm in a meeting. I love you. I'll see you in Portugal. Natasha. Goodbye, mate. Oh, good. Yeah, so um, this has been fun. It has. If you've got any thoughts on uh, anything in this series before our wrap-up episode, then please do email us at um, aquietnightinside09 at gmail.com. Uh, do get in touch via Twitter, AQNIN9. Um, and yeah, let's keep the conversation going. Why have I said that? I don't know, but you don't want to keep... (laughs) I mean, you're about to... You've said that as you're ending the podcast. (laughs) Keep the conversation going. Bye. (laughs)